there's nothing better than actually coming out in the winter, like I am today, at the famous Gold Valley Lakes in Hampshire. It's a venue that I fished many, many times over many, many years when I was team fishing or actually come and fish with the open matches. I'm on a lake today called Middle Lake. It's a big lake. There's lots of F1s. There's also lots of carp and lots of bream. But on the way down over the last couple of days, we have had a lot of rain. We have had well, probably one of the driest summers on record, but we are now making up for it. On the way down, I've gone through some massive floods, you know, huge puddles, and it's probably been one of the coldest nights that we've had. And believe me, this morning, it's really overcast, it's really cold. I've got the wind in my face. It's gonna be a tough, tough day. I spoke to Will Raisin this morning. Obviously, him and his dad run the lakes down here. He said that Middle Lake has actually come up between 10 inches and a foot in the last couple of days, and the colour is completely gone out of it. I've gone over to the lake, had a look, I could probably see a good two to two and a half foot down. I know it's gonna be tricky, but believe me, these are the days when you can make slight changes, or I'm hoping, <laughs> nothing's uh, guaranteed as we know, but I'm hoping that I can make this film be a real special film for you guys on how to catch not just F1s, but carp and hopefully an odd skimmer in the winter. Let's get back. I'm going to mix a little bit of ground bait up because I think that could be really, really important. I can't wait to get going. So let's get back to my gear. Well, I'm about to start now, and like I said in the intro, looking at the conditions, very, very clear water. It's had a massive flush through of rainwater now, these lakes. And I've got to make a decision. I think it's going to be tough. I really do. I've done some micros. I've got some Fin Perfect micros out. I've soaked them to the max. And what I'm going to do to start with is literally just pot in, and which is what I do a lot on F1 water, especially open waters like this. I've also got some expander four mils, but today, looking how clear it is, I think it's going to be a maggot day. I really do. That's my first sort of opinion. And I think I'm going to have to fish long. I'm going to have to fish. I'm going to try and catch it 13 metres, but I've also got me 14 and a half and 16 metre piece out. Hopefully, I haven't got to go to 16. I'm hoping to fish between 13 and 14 and a half. But looking at the conditions again, how close do you think I'm going to catch today? You know, I, I honestly think I can plumb up anywhere in my peg and it is the same depth, which is really, really nice. I can just use the same rigs. I think I'm going to opt to sort of 10 metres. It's a, it's, a, it's a length that I fish quite a lot for my sealfish fishing. And I think it's going to be a good length today. The wind's in my face. It's cold. It's clear. I can loose feed maggots nice and tight at 10 metres, but I'm going to start at 13 metres. And with the wind as it is, I'm just going to start off with a little 4B12. It's just over, I would say it's four and a half foot deep. And the water is actually up about 10 inches. And I'm just going to start with a single red maggot. And I'm also going to start with a little flory pinky because I think it's going to be tough. And then I'm literally going to put a few maggots live maggots in my little cad pot probably about 20 maggots and i'm going to put a few micros over the top i've got two ground baits mixed up or two different ways of mixing ground bait before i tap that in i will talk about that i've got some let's get me maggots out of the ground bait i've got some f1 green and pro fatters just mixed 50 50. now that one there i've mixed it this morning i've put it through a riddle twice and that's really fluffy. So it's sort of like I can make a cloud with that. It's going to go down because it might be really important today. I don't know yet. And then I've got this mix, which is basically what I've done is put some water in that container, 
mix that ground bait that I got there into it until it's gone like a hard paste. Now, one thing I do know about F1 fishing when the water's clear is they come off the bottom. In matches that I fished, I see a lot of people striking it liners. There's not a lot you can do about that. But if they want a bit of ground bait with that mix, I can go between that soft ground bait to putting a hard little ball in like that, like a marble. You can even use like a like a bread punch if you want. Um, but I'm, you know, having a mix like that, which is wet, I can put little balls in like that. So that's my two mixes. But I'm going to start with just micros and a few maggots and just see how I'm going to get on. But I'm, I just got a feeling as well. It's going to be a catapult. I'm going to be catapulting, baiting over the top maggots on a big water like this. I think it's going to be really important. But let's start off with that and see how we get on. Just started getting a few indications. Like I said at the start of the film, I think with the weather we've been having, we've had so much rain the last few days. I just spoke to Will. He said this lake's actually up sort of eight or 10 inches. But, you know, we've had such a good summer, but it is winter now. It's a very cold morning this morning, but one thing's apparent is picking the catapult up, putting that little bit of loose ground bait in, picking the catty up, just loose feeding a few maggots. It's not easy because I've got the winds, this breeze that we got is in my face. I'm not sure what this is. But like I've always said on my films that I do in winter fishing, it's getting that first bite. And I reckon it's probably taken a good 45 minutes to get an actual indication. And you'll find that a lot with F1s. I mean, we're on Middle Lake at Gold and it's a lake I've fished many times over the years. I had some absolute awesome days fishing. Silverfish fishing, carp fishing. And obviously over several years now, they made a decision to put F1s in. It's quite a big, you know, the lakes at Gold Valley are big lakes. They're not small lakes, and it's nice to actually come. And I actually fished some of the winter leagues for Dorking, who I, the team I fished for, and I really enjoyed it. So hopefully this is the turning point now. This is where I can start potting in a little bit. Also catapulting and starting to get some indications. But that catapult in, I think, it, especially at the start of the session, if you're not catching straight away, pick a catapult up. Like I said, it's not easy because I've got the wind in my face. You can see that fish absolutely miles down. Nice F1. But nothing better than catching these fish. They're absolutely freezing cold. That was on my good old single red maggot and a floral pinky. Because I'm not getting bitted out or anything. So I'm not going to hang around because I want to get back out there. If we're going to start getting some bites now. 18 SFL. To uh, 010. I know 010 and a lake like this you think, you know, I can always go up to 011 when and if I start getting bites. I just like to get, feel confident in starting on that light side. I knew it was going to be difficult this morning. So just tapping a few maggots in and then we'll talk as we go along about the ground baits that I've mixed up and how I've mixed them up. Just a bit of Pro Thatcher's Green and a bit of Green F1, which is my favorite mix. You can't go wrong with it, whether you're surface fishing, or whether you're doing what I'm doing. Just drop that little bit of ground bait, a little bit short, but I've gone to my full 14 and a half meters. Just chap them few maggots in. So I'm making an area with the catapult and then trying to drop sort of 12 maggots in, 15 maggots where I'm fishing. And that just sat there. Both bites I've had at the moment have been like wallet. We're not gonna miss them.
and hopefully that's the turning point now obviously don't forget about your short line even though I know it's going to be a difficult day top kit plus three I've decided to fish because it is clear it's really cold just catapulting on that line at the moment now whether they come in on that you never know but there's one thing you don't do is not feed it I've been to all sorts of different venues. You have to excuse the helicopter because right, we are right by a, an army base. There's one thing you don't do on whether it's a big lake like I'm fishing today or a canal style lake is not feed that short line, even in the coldest days. There's days where I've really struggled and I've come short and got out of trouble. It doesn't matter what venue it is what, what, and also what bait you decide to fish. I've done some micros, I've done some expanders, but to be honest, as soon as I seen the water this morning, I thought I'll just start with maggots, and I think it's gonna fish really difficult. And I just decided to stick with maggots. I've got a few micros, I actually have fed a few micros with me maggots, but as soon as we sat there for like 20 minutes, half an hour, I've had a bite, I thought, no, I've got to introduce a bit of ground bait, and that's when I've had a few bites. And I'm just catapulting like, you know, not a lot, probably sort of six to ten maggots. It's 40 and a half metres out, so it's quite difficult. So I'm catapulting them from sort of 13 to 14 and a half. And then as the day goes on, if we start getting more bites, I can try, try and drop back to 13. But at the moment, confidence for me is fishing 14 and a half metres. I think the fish have just moved out. I've not had a bite at 13, I've had both bites I've had, or a few indications I've had, is it 40 and a half. But, like I said, we've only been fishing for 45 minutes. I've got a little 4B12 F1 maggot, it's probably five foot deep. And that's what I try and do, I've got a 4B14 set up as well, it's exactly the same depth, I can literally fish anywhere in the peg, and it is like a snooker table which is nice because I can move around my peg. I've actually set a line up to my left as well. I've not had an indication on that yet, but I'm still looking after it, just tapping a few maggots now and again. And I think when the water's clear like it is, they, you sort of hook one. There's probably a few there and they bolt, they bolt off because they're not really feeding. And then hopefully they'll settle down and we'll have a nice run. Got a real nice fish on now. If this is an F1, I think it's a world record. But as Gold Valley, we all know gold is some great big carp in here. I am fishing 010, so I've got to go careful. I've got nine draw slip elastic on. That is a good fish, actually, that. I'm just going to go really careful. But I think because the water's so cold, probably get away with it with a bit of luck. I'm not going to take too many sections off early. But this is what's so lovely about this style of fishing. The sun's a bit awkward at the moment. But catapulting, little tiny bit of loose ground bait. We'll talk about the ground baits as I'm playing this. Because I've actually got the same mix, but I've actually got two sort of different... Two different sort of mixes. One's wet and one's dry. And I do that a lot this time of year for F1s and carp. The dry mix is obviously just going to break up as it goes down. And then if I start getting problems, you know, liners, I can put a little ball of wet mix in. It's a great way, not just fishing in open water, up to islands as well. This one's going to try and get down the edge, I hope it doesn't. Because it feels like a real nice fish. It'd be a real big bonus getting this out today. Just take your time. I'm not going to pull its head off. He is right down the edge here at the minute. I think he's coming out. Feels like a real big fish actually. So obviously at the moment that fish is down in the edge. I'm just holding it out there. I'm not pulling on it. I'm just try, sort of trying confusing it. Sometimes the worst thing you can do is actually pull really hard. Not happy, I'll tell you. 
And whilst I've got that, I'm just going to ping a few maggots out because that catapulting, flicking past everything, is definitely, I think, the key at the moment to get that odd bite. I see so many anglers not pick a catapult up. This might take some time. I'm just trying to get it out from that edge. That 13, 013 main line. I said 010 Aki Power bottom. They're the bottoms that I tie up myself in the winter. You know, with fishing tunnel bar in places like that. Nice and light. I'm gonna try it. Even when I, even though fishing on 010, I can actually give that some. Oh yeah, that feels like heavy. That. That'd be a right bonus getting that in. This is where you don't want to go careful because they nod their heads and you can end up snapping yourself up. A little bit light really, 010, but you know, a day like today, trying to catch everything, it just gives me the confidence that I'm going to get some bites. I can always go up to like 011. At the moment, I probably fish, <laughs> I wish I was fishing 011 or 012. Nice fish that. Maybe one I one I caught many years ago when I used to come to gold all the time. I do miss it. I miss it a lot. I don't miss the traffic. Coming from Bristol to London area, it's not the greatest as we know. But the fishing, Gold Lake was always my favourite and Middle Lake. I've had some fantastic matches over the years. Obviously I know Will really well and his dad and it looks amazing. A beautiful carp that you can see it miles down. It's just a pity Zolt can't pick it up with the camera. I reckon I can see that three foot down, and I'm only fishing five foot deep. So it's not surprising that uh, it's not easy. So, like I said, you have to excuse the, the helicopters and stuff because we are right by an army base. Look at that, the proper unit. Look at him bubbling. You always know he's a big one when they do that. You see the bubbles coming up. I think the film I'd done in Belgium with Zolt, I did mention that a few times, like they bubble up. The gill, the, the, the air starts coming out of the gills as you're playing them. That normally sense, either a pike, pike do that a lot as well. But I think this is a good carp. I sort of think it's probably getting on for double figures. Not got it out yet, but. I'm certainly going to try my hardest. And that's why I'm fishing with a nine today, because I am fishing an open water lake. The F1s in here are a good size. They're going to scrap. I think there's a lot of elastics you can sort of use when you're doing this. You could even probably get away with a seven or a, even a white 13, but at least I have had a skimmer. So look at that. That's a lovely mirror carp. I can see it as a mirror because I can it's like tap water to water at the moment. I really want to get this out now. Imagine this in a match. It'd be a massive bonus in the winter of this. Look at him. Absolute beauty. Always oh, I think it's a mirror ghosty actually. And that was just flicking it past me pole tip, even with a 4B12. I've not, I've not gone to a 4B14 yet. The wind's just not, it's all right actually, the wind. And I always, always fish little floats like that. When I'm struggling to, you know, when I'm sort of struggling for bites at the start of the session, I just think any minute now I could flick it out. A great big carp like this could end up, you know, nailing it on the drop. And, you know, you make your own luck. And that's why I sort of fish little floats like that if I can, even on a big lake like this. Just strung out shot, two number 10s, three number 9s, and a couple of little adjustments shot. It's a beautiful fish, that. Look at a tail on that. Oh, don't go in there. Go on, get out of there. 
This is where you just got to be really careful because if that line goes around his dorsal, it's a lot of pressure on your little look length. Six inch look length. Standard look lengths for me this winter fishing. And a, and a fluoro pinky and a red maggot. Come on. Come on. I must admit, when I used to come here years ago, some of the carp in here were, were some of the hardest fighting carp I've ever been to anywhere in the country. And this one is no different. Go on, babe. Look at him. It's one of them that sort of digs down, won't, won't get his head up. Just keeps powering towards the bottom. Oh, come on. Problem is I want to get back out there. Now I've started getting some bites. I really want to get back in because it's really enjoyable. But I also want to get this out. Not, not just for you guys to see it, but for my own personal thing, really. Come on. Just will not get his head up, look. And it's, that's the thing, with the water being so clear, they can see everything. That's what it is, they can see Zolt and they're panicking. That's exactly what the problem is there, Zolt. I do panic when I see him every morning, to be honest. Look at that, absolutely beautiful fish that get in. That's what we want, Zolt. He's not far off 10 pound. I'll try and hold him up for you. My tiny little 18 SFL. Right, I'm gonna try and hold him up. Because he's absolutely, what a fantastic winter Gold Valley carp that is. I'm not gonna hold him up for long because he's so bright. Look at that. Absolutely awesome, eh? 010. Freezing cold. Let's get him back and try and get some more. I think this is a an F1 again. Um, it's, it is absolutely brilliant fishing. I love this. When you've got to work for your bites. I know we do a lot of filming and stuff, but these are the days... Even when Zolt says to me, Des, that bite was ridiculous. How did you see that? And that's what you've got to try and get into. I've actually taken two number 11 stots off because of the conditions. I've probably got more float shown in what I actually normally do. And the bites, I've just put a little bit more line on as well. I reckon I'm fishing about that far over depth at the moment, probably three inches because of the conditions. Same float, 4B12 F1 maggot. And it's like I'm flicking past my pole tip, feeding a few maggots with the catapult and with the pot. And then now and again, I put a tiny dear little ball, the size of probably even smaller than your thumbnail of the wet ground bait. And it's just started now. You could just tell the last two F1s have been the ghosty F1s. They're absolutely beautiful. Let's see if I can get him out. That's another one of those ghosty F1s. Beautiful fish in it, gold. Look at him. Probably about the same sort, you know, you can see there, I've actually used a disgorger on him, which is pretty unusual for F1 fishing. And that's me fishing that little bit, probably half a float length over depth. Because of the conditions, never, you know, never forget that. Even Matt is, I fished it tunnel when the conditions have not been brilliant. We always talk about fishing just over depth. But there is days like today when I've had to sort of just say, well, I, I can't physically fish dead depth. You know, I probably, I probably am missing some of those tiny indications that I would normally strike at. And I'm fishing 14 and a half metres. You know, people say to me, Des, you know, why, you know, my superior 90 at that length, it makes a massive difference. There's no doubt about it, and that's when these poles come into their own. 
fishing long like I am. Hopefully, I did actually just come back and try sort of 13 and a half metres, and I've never had a bite. They won't come in. But I'm still feeding that short line, top kit plus three, with a catapult. I'm not being like, I'm, I am feeding a bit of bait. I'm not messing around. I am feeding like 20 maggots. I know it's not a lot really, but I also want to make sure if I go in on that, I've also fed enough bait. It, this open water fishing like gold, I find a lot of lakes like that, you can be a little bit too negative on open water matches or open water lakes rather. Tap it in like five maggots, it just doesn't do it for me. I always feel like you can be more aggressive. I'm not sure quite why. You know, the big, big expanses of water, lots of fish. The conditions are always a lot worse on big lakes like this. You've only got a little, a little bit of wind in it and it makes it harder to fish. On the opposite bank today, I mean, it'd be absolutely beautiful. I could loose feed probably right around me float of a catapult. And you probably know that you probably would be catching more fish because your presentation's better. But sitting in the wind, this is what we do day in, day out. There we go, that bite. Absolute joke. Honestly, a little bit more bristle showing. You just think, was that a, the wind blowing then? And I just latched into it. And another middle late F1. Starting to get going now. Like I said, another two inches of, you know, instead of plumbing up on my normal body out of the water, that is at least, I would say, I've not put a plummet on, but I moved me float probably two inches and that has helped massively. A lot of fishing abroad, when I used to go abroad with the England team, when the, the Italians, teams like that, used to fish for Carasio, it was amazing how long or how much line they put on the bottom. But they used to fish tiny little floats. I'm not quite into that yet, not in England. And I've never little ghosty F1 that. And that's what these films are all about. It's me, I mean, I, obviously I didn't know I was gonna sit in the wind today. If I knew where the wind, well, when we got here, it was flat calm. I probably would have sat over there out of the wind because it is pretty damn cold. But that's what these films are all about, is actually, you know, coming out with me, you know, fishing or fishing matches and seeing what goes on and you pick up all the little tips that I've probably sort of just done naturally over years and passing the information on to you. But I've not changed my hook bait. I love that hook bait, maggot and floral pinky. But I've still got a little cab pot on there. I've not put no ground bait in for the last couple of casts. Without that ground bait today, I think we'd have had to, I think we'd have been here for quite some time to get an indication. That's just dragged them in your peg. Just nice and smooth. I said full 40 and a half. And I'm just tapping those maggots out in a bit of a line, probably over like about a meter. Not all down one little hole and then flicking that as best I can out past. It sort of goes out like that, like an arc, and I can hold it, and then the float goes out like that, and then just watch it. Really hard to see the float at the moment because you've got the black cloud. When it was white cloud, sort of fluffy cloud, I could see it, but now there's a black cloud in the background. It's not so easy. Still see it, but a little bit more difficult. And you might think to yourself, well, Des, why don't you pick the 4B14 up? I just think fishing for these sort of fish, like we are today, it's not too deep. It's a nice depth. It's like getting on for five foot. If it was much deeper than that, I'd have probably fished a 4B14 and even a 4B16. But if you can get away with it, definitely try a small float. It's, it is windy, but it's not, it's, you know, it's all right. And I know from years of fishing for these things, 
the difference between fishing little floats and big floats when you're fishing with maggots is, is massive. I've not actually caught one on the drop, mine. But I think having those shots spread out, just pick the catty up now, fire some bait out. I'm trying to get it out there as close and around me float as I can. It's not easy. But I think without this, on a big water like this, you're, you're, it just feels like you're dragging nothing in your peg unless you put that little bit of ground bait in and loose feed. They're not coming to like a really, really tight area of bait. They might do, they might do later, but to get them going and get them competing, I think having them few maggots fluttering down through, you know, they're all over the bottom in like a decent little area. I do it a lot. I do that a lot. It don't, you know, it's always, see that was a bite then and I didn't strike at it. 100% a little indication that. And if you watch some of the underwater films that I've done a couple over the years and I've watched other ones, they, they will actually take your bait and spit it out so fast. It is frustrating when you've got the wind like I have today, but how many times do we go out in fishing conditions like this? And F1 fishing in the wind has got to be one of the most probably frustrating ways of fishing, but you have to do it. And you've got to make the most, whether you're a match angler like I am, or you're fishing winter leagues against other teams. You've got to, you know, you've got to come out and fish in these conditions. I'm just going to feed that inside line again. Maggots grouped together brilliantly there, but obviously not so great out there because it's it's quite it's quite a long way. And I've probably been fishing for like two hours now, two and a bit hours I think, two and a quarter hours. And I'm going to give it like another half an hour, and I will look at that inside line, even though. It is really nice fishing and I'm catching okay. Never think that they won't come on that short line, no matter how hard the fishing is. Like I said earlier in the film, you'd be amazed that loose feed in that short line, you can come in on it. Like I said it might not happen, but you've got to have a look. Probably halfway or just over halfway of your session especially in the winter time. Because you never know, you might drop in there and get two free bites, you might not drop, you know, you might not get any bites. I think you have to have a look like halfway through, especially in a five hour match. There we go. Now if Zolt could have actually filmed that, it would have been a mega. I don't know whether he has, he's nodding his head, ladies and gentlemen. But that's what this fishing is all about. That's what this film's about. I'm glad really that I've actually sat in the wind where I've had to change things around. Feels like a good fish that. It's not really doing a lot. It might be another carp. It's not very... Uh not doing a lot that. It'd be lovely to catch another car, especially in these conditions. Yeah, I reckon that's a carp. That's the nice thing about fishing, like even for these fish in the winter, they're not bolting off. If this was in the summer, they'd be probably on the other side of the lake by now. But building a really nice winter catch of F1s and luckily a couple of carp. I've had one carp already, obviously that big ghosty. This is definitely a carp. And the old, you know, 18 SFL it is a really small look, but don't worry about it. They are strong, strong enough to sort of fish 0, 0, 010, 012. I enjoy these days more than like 
bagging up. I think these are the days for filming, even though it is, you know, Zolt panics a little bit at the start of the filming. Des, come on, need to get some bites. <laughs> but these are the days when, you know, Zolt says to me, you know, he's learned so much and, and I know if Zolt's learning, then you're learning too, which is what it's all about. Just letting it do its work, let the elastic do its work. And get used to your lines. I mean, I obviously do a lot of fishing. I'm used to all the lines that I fish with, like O10 Aki Power. You know, I know what it can sort of do. I was actually down White Acres recently and I caught 126 pound of F1s. Oh, hello. Look at that. Great big Gold Valley Common. And I caught 126 pound of F1s on O10 and exactly the same. Yeah, you know, apart from I went from an 18 to a 16 because the fishing was that good. I did look a few carp, but I've got two out. Well, I've got three out, I think, which were like eight pound a piece. That's a lovely big common, that. But really, the film today has been about F1 fishing in the winter. I'm not going to moan about catching some of the big carp here at Gold Valley. I might have caught this one ten years ago or so. You never know. I've got one of the small cab pots on. Never felt really at the moment that I need to, I just need to put like 15, 20 maggots in where I'm fishing, loose feed a few round the float or near the float and just get an odd bite. And just enjoy the day really, just enjoy the fishing. And I've actually fished <laughs> slightly to my left hand side of my peg because I can fish a black float into that silver water and I I always find if you can try and fish a black float because you just see everything or yeah orange float today I got a shadow bang in front of me of a tree and with that ripple it have been so difficult so I've opted to go slightly to the left only about a meter and a half two meters And it just makes me, you know, I can just see everything. Come on, baby. Yes. I'll take that any day. Oh, yeah, that's £10. Thanks for coming. Whoa. Amazing. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not going to hold him up. He's a bit lively, this one. He's not happy. Look at him. He's ten pound. Absolutely. Yeah, here we go. Oh, ho, ho. get in. At last, a bite on that short line. And if we were fishing a match now, it'd be that last 40 minutes. So I've actually hooked a carp there about 40 minutes ago to actually dumb me down the inside on some roots. And I've just had my first drop in on a single red maggot. I've been loose feeding maggots there from the start. Definitely an F1, this one. Every fish has tried to do me on the inside. Because it's so clear, I think they can probably see all the roots and stuff. 
I can't really stress, you won't see it on camera, how clear the lakes have gone with the amount of water, uh, the rain that's gone through. But what, obviously what I opted to do was not fish like a top kit plus two, but 10 meters. It was really nice today because I can plumb up and virtually fish, hello, he come up nicely for me. I can fish sort of anywhere in me peg with the same rigs. Look where that's hooked. Literally, that's what happens when the water's really clear. Just on the chin. And you'll find that a lot of matches I fish in the winter for F1s. Let me just get back out a minute. Single red maggot. I'm not going to pot anything. I'm just going to catapult a few maggots before I go back out. Maybe like 12 maggots, something like that. And go back in. Like I said, I opted to go 10 metres because when I went out long, 13 metres, I never had a bite. So I went to 14 and a half and then I had my first bite. And in my mind, I was thinking, I've got to go really careful today about where I fish short. It might be too short. So at least like 10 metres, I just felt I might get away with it late on. And that's my second bite. The first bite I just had out of the blue, which was a carp, which unfortunately dumped me down the inside. And I've just had that bite then. But the fishing's been absolutely brilliant. It's been tough. It's been brilliant for the film because I've had to work my absolute socks off. There we go, look at that. Awesome. Even on a big lake like I am today, freezing cold. Let me just catapult a few maggots out while I'm doing that because I can't throw them because it's too far. But this open water fishing is about catapulting. And so many matches I have done this. You know, you've had to work your socks off out long, 14 and a half, 13 metres, and you just think they're never going to come in short. You have a few goes there during your day, nothing. You drop in there like I have. I've, in a five hour match, we've probably got like half an hour to go now. You drop in, single maggots, double maggots, little hooks, short, you know, light lines, little floats and they rock up and it's brilliant. So that's the second F1. But they're coming in off the bottom, there's no doubt about it, and you'll find that so much in the winter with F1s. It's just really clear. I think some of them come off the bottom and then obviously you've got the, the odd one that goes down as a bit of a feed. But I can see that fish so far down, it's ridiculous. I can virtually net that. Look at that. <laughs> it's so clear. Another beautiful Gold Valley F1. I'm going to try and get one more because I'm freezing. The cameras are packing up because the batteries are flat. Same rig as what I'm fishing at at 14 and a half. Make sure it's nice and clean. Nice big juicy red maggot. My nose is starting to run. So I just fed them sort of 12, 15 maggots to see if I can get them and get another one. And then we're going to have to call it a day. So just flick that out like that. And then just let the float catch up and then hold it. And I've had to be patient. I think even on this short line, I've had to give it a bit of time. Even when I went on it earlier, I didn't just go on it in just like two minutes. I'd give it like five, ten minutes before I come off of it because the water is so clear. Even that now, I might only catch a couple because they probably spook off. You just don't know from one day to the next. No little fish are fed today. No roach, no perch. I've had one skimmer. Everything else has been a carp or an F1. Oh, oh yes. Oh, I think that might be a skimmer actually. What a bite that was. Let 
Well, I'm not going to finish on a skimmer. I'm going to try and finish off what we come to catch was either carp or F1s. But he's very welcome. Nice pound skimmer. If I can find me disgorger, I'll put them in there. See if I can get one more. It's lovely, so that's the third bite. Just going to put a few live maggots in my pot just to get like what I've been doing it 14 half really. Just to pot a few right where I'm fishing. And I don't sit there for absolutely ages. I'll sit there for a bit, lift me rig out, drop it back in again like I did then. That skimmer must have seen that on the way down and nailed it. But that loose feeding, definitely, on, well, on that long line, I've had to do that. I think without loose feeding with the catapult today, I just don't think you would have dragged any fish in your peg. I think you would have just literally been sat there motionless for so long. We're loose feeding, lifting your rig out, flicking it around, like that. Just the same as on that short line. Pick the catty up, sort of 10, 12 maggots, something like that. Come on, I know there's one there. I had that little liner just a minute ago. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect. So two F1s, that skimmer. Another F1 now, I think. My nose is absolutely running wild because it's gone so cold. And that's time of day. Time of day, fishing out a little bit further. Definitely another F1, I think. And I'm going to call it this the last fish. It's been a brilliant day. It's been a tough day, believe me. But we've caught loads some big carp, loads of F1s. I mean, I just had a line and then, like I said, I think they come in your peg off the bottom, you walk a couple and then they probably spook away. I think that's another ghosty F1, that. Nice fish to finish this film off, though. It's the first time this winter that my hands have now got really, really cold. Look at that. A beautiful ghosty F1 here at Gold Valley Lakes. Thanks to Will and his dad for letting me fish here again. Brought back some great memories of coming to Gold. Let's get the hook out of him. But most importantly, it's been one of them days where I know you guys are going to pick up loads of tips on how to fish for F1s. And luckily, we've caught some big carp today. And uh, I think this film would be absolutely mega. You know, carp fishing and F1 fishing in the winter. Thanks for watching, and let's get him back.